So I think what we need to do is pull some yellows. So I'm gonna pull some yellows and some chartreuse colors from the Who Who Hero section first. These are a little bit less pigmented than the um, Prisma colors, but they're still really nice colored pencils. And if you haven't got a set yet, we'll put the link in the description as to where you can get those. We've got those available. So anyway, I'm gonna pull the yellows and some of these greens. I need the, I need more yellow in the green at this point. So these greens here have more blue in them. We're gonna use those on the stripes and on the hump de hump here. So I'm gonna put these right here. And I'm gonna go to my Hulu Hero box and just pull a few more colors. I'm pulling all the greens actually. All the greens. Because I think we're gonna need them. This one is gonna be quite spectacular. I'm confident in that. Okay. Look at this. Look at this pile of, of, of color here. I'm going to pull some of these yellow oranges too, because I think these will be good. Ooh, that's a nice color too. What color is that? Coral. Coral! Okay, so here we go. Okay, so this bass is definitely, I mean, you can tell from this image right here, you can tell that it's set up differently than the. Um, All right, let's get into this. Hmm. I'm gonna grab yellow green first. We're gonna do something fun with this background. I kinda wanna pop out of the background. So, um, I'm gonna just go ahead and start laying in very, very lightly. Man, you know, I know I just said that these weren't as pigmented, but Lord have mercy, they are, they're, they're, they've got some wild vivid color. I don't know how light fast it is, but it doesn't matter here because this is, say it with me, for practice. I just want to get all this color in here. I'm going to go ahead, even though I know that the gill plate and the bottom jaw is, you know, the underneath here is going to be reds. These fish are so beautiful. I'm telling you, these, these fish are just, they're stunning. I'm going to just color all of this in very quickly and notice that I'm not trying to do it in any way, shape or form. There is, it's messy and I want it messy on purpose because I want the variation when I'm finished. I want there to be some variation in the colors the way it gets done. So right now, I'm doing this. Now I'm going to avoid the yellow in the dorsal fin and in the tail. I am gonna go ahead and put a little bit of yellow in the anal fin. I'm not gonna come all the way to here with it though because this is gonna be blues and whites. This is fine, just like this. So I know you're thinking, wow, Rio, that's a hot mess. And you're right, it is a hot mess, but it's gonna get better. It's gonna get a lot better. I've changed my mind on the olive green first. We're gonna go with pale sage first from the Prisma color. And I'm gonna come in here and lay that in right here in this area. Still not 100% the color that I want though. Let me see if maybe Yellow chartreuse is the color that I want. Ooh. Okay, I'm gonna put some of that up here. That's still not 100% the color that I want though. Wow. Yeah. That is the color I want on his cheeks. Now I'm going back to making tiny little circles on his cheeks. Tiny little circles, because what that's going to do is give the illusion of scale pattern. 
because I don't want to spend all the time making scale patterns on this. This is not a painting for sale, this is for practice. So I'm just coming in and taking this yellow chartreuse and just beginning to kind of lay in some colors there. I still want that to be lighter. I just grabbed the gray green light and I'm kind of adding some color in up there. I know that I want his eyelid to be a little bit lighter and see that's the color that I wanted. Now I'm also going to take this gray green light over here and just very loosely put a layer on the dorsal fin, not pushing too hard and also not covering the entirety of it. I just need a little bit of that in there. So all of these greens are going to come into play. This fish is incredibly colored. Just, it's just mind blowing to me. I can't get enough of them really. I know you're going to get tired of hearing me say it. Okay, olive green. I'm going to put a little bit of that right here and see if this is the correct color. This is the correct shadowing color. So we're going to come in with some of this right in here. Very, very lightly. You don't want to overdo it at this point. So I'm going to go around this line that I drew in for you guys, just a skosh here. And this is the shadow area from his pectoral fin. So I'm going to go a little bit darker here. And this is just the beginning. We're going to have to add some oranges down here and all the whole nine yards. I also want to bring a little bit of this olive. I'm always holding a fistful of colors here. I'm gonna bring some of this olive over here just a touch. It's always unnerving to start with the color pencils. If I was painting this, I would have I would have sepia washed the entire thing and then come over it. So starting with a white with the white paper is sometimes challenging, but it helps you to get to know your colors a lot better, and so I think it's probably pretty a pretty a pretty okay thing. So I feel like we're gonna have like a ridge right there. I think that, that will pop up just a touch. got the highlight there, a little bit of the pale sage over the top of that, the pale sage, all of this here just very quickly because there's going to be a ton of color in this fish. The face itself is just, I mean, there's just a lot. There's a lot going on. Okay, so I need a gray Slate gray. Let's see. Yep. Okay. I'm going to put these down right here because I'm going to revisit this. I'm going to sharpen my slate gray. I know there are some artists that will start in one area of a, of a picture and work their way from one side to the next and finish it as they go along. I am not that artist. So. I kind of bounce around a bit.
And as we go down this dorsal fin, I'm just lightly kind of using this slight gray where the spines would be on the dorsal fin. It's gonna have a little bit of a darker line here on the end. Not on the tips of this one, on the, the tips of this, the, of this fish are really bright and kind of transparent. So I don't know what I'm gonna do about that line. I might go in and use the paint pen and get rid of that line a little bit, but. So I know I'm also gonna have some of this gray back here. For me, I like to try to put the shadows in first, but when, when you're working with the color pencils, you have to lay in your brightest colors first. So I've done that already. You've seen that it's pretty bright throughout here. I've got bright here and here. Um, so now I'm going in and I'm just starting to add where my shadows are. And I'm going right over the top. Ooh, that's a good color. There it is. That's coming to life right there. Yep, that'll do. That will do for sure. Okay, so I know that I'm gonna have, again, circles, just little baby circles. Uh, so I'm gonna come in back here on the tail. Do a little accentuating with all of this. Oh yeah. Okay, then it's gonna have a little bit of shadow down here as well. And I don't want it to be super dark yet because I'm gonna have to put like 37 different colors on top of all this anyway. I also know that at the base of this hump, there's gonna be a little bit of a shadow. We're gonna come around just like that. And that might not be perfect, but it, it'll be okay for the for this application here. We're also gonna give him a little bit of shadow here. He's gonna have a little bit more shadow here because this is gonna pop up. This part of his lip or his face is gonna kind of arc up a little bit there. Um, have some of this I'm gonna put some of this around his eyeball his eyeballs very white right now very white so we're gonna come in around that I also kind of feel like he's going to be striped a little bit. I'm just going to add, just going to keep kind of coming in here. Looks like I'm putting dirt on him at this point, but trust me, it's going to work out. So I know for a fact that his pectoral fin is going to be darker. So I'm going to add a little bit of that color here. Gonna have a little bit of a shadow here. Gonna have some shadows under here. A little bit more shadow under here. Definitely shadow in here
this is going to be dark in here too. These these, and I, I I drew some of them in for you. I don't like drawing all the scales. I think you've got to learn to start seeing it for yourself. But at the same time, I understand that you know sometimes it's really intimidating to start a piece like this, and I don't want you to be intimidated. I want you to have fun. This is fun. So then that part right there is going to be the lighter greens, and then we're going to do this here, and then that's going to be the lighter green. So this is, we're just going to Again, teeny tiny little squiggles, just teeny tiny little squigglies, because that gives the illusion that we're outlining some scales uh, very loosely. See, that already looks like scales. Y'all, my allergies. I didn't even know I had allergies. This whole Midwest lifestyle right now that I'm living is not okay. <laughs> Okay, let's start having a little fun with the color. Let's try this Mediterranean blue and let's see if this is a good color on the, woo, on the dorsal fin. Oh my goodness. Okay, I actually think this color is supposed to be further back. When in doubt, you guys, test, swatch your colors. I don't always take my own advice, but swatch your colors. Okay, I'm also going to, let's try non-photo blue. Oh yeah, that's a good one. So I'm going right over the top of that. These fish are just so beautiful. I can't get enough of them. photo blue now not the whole tail just some of the tail then we got some of that non photo blue that comes in down here on this anal fin just on the edges yes 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 I'm gonna add a little bit of that up in here too I'm gonna go right over his face Ooh, look at that color look at that green start to pop up Yep, that's what we're looking for. That's it. I'm gonna add just a touch here, there, and yonder. Because you know we like the yonder. I'm just gonna make some scale patterns just very, very lightly. Woo -hoo 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 -hoo. This makes me so happy. It makes my heart happy because they're so beautiful. Here it is, coming to life, right here on the on the canvas. Okay, spring green. Let's see what spring green on top of that blue does. Wow! Look at that. Look at that color. Yes. I'm gonna add some of this randomly here where the light still is. A little bit over here. I'm gonna come in here and start adding some of this on his body. Right back here. A 
This is obviously gonna have to have a lot more shadow, but I always get nervous to add too much shadow right out of the gate. I sort of like to let it evolve naturally before I start adding too much chaos to it all. Now, I love this color, so I'm gonna go over some of his, his face here. Not all of it, just some of it. And I'm just, again, making the little circles. Right over all of that shadowy area. Look at that fish come to life. That's what's happening here. That's what's what happening. And we're just gonna keep going over it with the dark little squiggles and then the light little squiggles. And we're just gonna keep making it pop right off that page. Ooh, that's so beautiful. Right in there, just like that. Just like that. Okay, we're gonna keep that color out because we like it. Okay, now we're gonna jump to the dark green. We're gonna start making some of this just a little bit more prominent, a little more noticeable. So I just like to bounce around this thing. Let's get some stripies in here. Let's, let's start to make these stripies stand out a little bit more than they are right now. I'm feeling like this is gonna be, have a little more of that green in there. Just a touch. Oof. I always get nervous when I start adding in the darker colors. I just always get nervous. And then I remind myself, you know what you're doing. You've done it a hundred times before. Although I've never painted a peacock bass. And this is the first time. This is great practice with all this color. I'm gonna add a little bit of this dark green here behind the spines just a touch and we're gonna we'll come back in a little bit later with some darker color as well it's gonna have to have some some umbers and some darker grays in there but for right now we're just gonna make little tiny squigglies little teeny tiny squigglies Here you can start to kind of see it come together just by tiny little increments. It's not gonna have a lot of dark there, but I wanna put the green down first before I put any other darker color in for these fish. This is so much fun. 
more squiggles. Don't kill all that yellow that we have in there. We're just gonna randomly, kind of loosely, come down the back side of this fish on his back and just lay in some of this dark green. We're gonna switch over to the brown, dark brown here, and we're just gonna add right on top. And at first it's gonna be pretty intense color. It's gonna be not necessarily the correct color. But I'm gonna just lightly color right over the top of that. And it's gonna change the way we see it. And do a little bit right here. A little bit of that brown at the top. Definitely going to come in to the dorsal fin with some of that brown. Definitely going to. Wow, okay, I'm, I'm liking it, I'm liking this. So I'm gonna add a little bit of that brown here. I'm gonna add a little bit of it here. Do you know these guys live eight to ten years? And that they're uh, the largest species in their uh, Sorry, I get to where I'm I'm thinking that the uh, speckled peacock is the largest peacock bass in the species. That's what I'm trying to say. And that they can get up to three and a half feet long and weigh up to 30 pounds. That's a big fish. Those are the ones you see them catching in the Amazon. Okay, those Instagram posts from the Amazon, yeah, that's where those are coming from. come in here and just start laying in a few more scales just little little doohickey bumpy bumps you know just here there and where yonder okay. that's working I'm gonna grab the true green and I'm gonna come in here and I just sharpened it to a super fine point 
and start coming over the top of all of these other areas here with this true green. There we go. Now see how that's turning to a more of a bluish green color as I go over that. I know we just went over it with brown, we just went over it with, with yellows, but now it's starting to develop. Now those stripes are starting to come through. Ooh, that's gonna be so good. Okay, I'm super excited. Add a little bit of that right in here. Kind of flex that gill plate a little bit. His cheek. Want some of this down in here as well. A lot of times when I'm painting, I always think to myself that I wish I had a paint stick in the exact color that I needed because it would be a lot faster. And here with these colored pencils, man, you just can roll right through all this. It's pretty cool. So see how we've got, this is starting to look more like fish color and this has still got a lot of that white showing through. So we're going to come over the top of it with this green right now making tiny little circles again and I'm doing it in a little different direction because I don't want to go over the scale pattern that I've already created so I'm doing it at an angle but still in the circle because that still gives the illusion of a textured scale pattern now we're going to come over and add a little bit of this green to the dorsal fin, Ooh. just a little bit up here on the top. Got to be careful you don't want to co cover the entire dorsal fin with the exact same colors because then you'll lose the wave that we're trying to create. So down in here I want some of this true green. It's more to the blue than it is to the yellow. that down we're gonna grab the chartreuse come in here with the chartreuse Ooh, it's super super intense my goodness that's intense but in here around his darker scale patterns where they've got the splotches you're gonna have that chartreuse color really kind of coming forward so we're also gonna have a pretty good line of it here his cheek is going to be very chartreuse-y. His underneath his eye is going to be very chartreuse-y. This color is, a, is just a brilliant color for this fish. I'm gonna add some of it there. I'm gonna come in and just add some little splotches here and there and then go back to coloring in the little circles that we're doing here. I'm going to add some more of it down here. A little bit lighter though. As you come down the fish, you're, you're going to want it to come underneath the fish. We're going to color a lot lighter. We're going to have some of that chartreuse up here to kind of accentuate the stripes on him and see just by slightly adding that in to the stripe pattern. It really starts to make the fish pop. Look at that. It's like magic. I'm going to add a little bit of the chartreuse back here on his tail. Now I am going to come in and cover that up. I'm also going to add a little bit of the chartreuse here because I want some of that color popping here as well. Um, definitely here on the side of his face. And again, we'll come in with all the shadows. It's kind of a back and forth, back and forth situation.
Start laying in some color on his eye real quick here. Picked up the coral from the Hoo Hoo Hero. Start on the outside edge, go right over that shadow that we already laid in there, and barely, barely fill in the rest of the iris of the eye. We don't want to lose the shape of the eye. And the eyes are the window to the soul. If you get the eye right, the whole rest of the fish can be off a little bit. And, and But if the eyes are correct, then it will still look photorealistic. Which, you know, if that's not your goal, cool. You don't have to paint it like that. That's kind of always my goal. And then I try to stretch myself a little bit further and it not be as photorealistic, but still look really good. Um, so... That's where I'm at in the process of it. I'm feeling like some of this color needs to go right on top here. It's like a wash. I feel like I'm going to add some of this in here, just right over that chartreuse. I don't want to go all the way back to the belly. I want to stop short, come in here and make a little squiggly line with this right over some of that orange color or that um, chartreuse color that we already laid down in there.
like there's a little bit of that orange up here. You know, these fish are so brightly colored. I feel like you could take a little bit of liberty if you wanted to. And add your own interpretations to it to a certain degree. Okay, now I know that there's definitely this orange color is definitely in the tail. The tail always reminds me of the Texas flag. So. Okay, let's come back up here and Okay, there's some of that coral. Let's switch colors again. Okay, we got the darker green in. I'm gonna grab some of this neon orange. I'm gonna sharpen it really good. It's such a nice color. It's such a nice color. And I know that there's a, I know there's a neon blue in here somewhere too. Where's the neon? Electric blue. So electric blue is a neon color as well. So we're going to take some of this electric blue and come up here in the top and just start to bump up some of the color in the pectoral fins a little bit. guys are so exotic looking. What's your favorite exotic freshwater fish? Leave a comment below. I, I love to read your comments. So tell me what your favorite exotic freshwater fish is. I also feel like I want to do a book on fish from Australia. I love fish over there. They are so incredibly beautiful. I just love fish. I love all fish. Okay, so I'm going to come here to the tail with the electric blue. And I want to be able to see a few polka dot patterns here because they're a little bit spotty. Their tails are a little spotty. I'm going to go over that dark 
green color. I also feel like I see this color in this part of the fish as well. Yep. I'm gonna have to come in and darken up some of this because it's just not dark enough. I'm gonna color outside the lines right here and give it just a little bit of a tipped color. Then we'll come back in and rework that with some other colors. See how that's starting to shape up? I'll add some of that in here because this is pretty intensely bright. I'm going to add some of it down here in this orange. And what happens is, you add it to that orange, helps it make the curve down here. Don't stress out if you color outside the lines because we're going to probably outline this fish with some really fun colors anyway. I want to add some of this blue randomly through his body in here and again making little squiggles gotta make those squiggles because those squiggles give you the illusion that you have taken the time to color all of those scales some of that over this here this section of his face a little bit here a little bit of shadowy color there so we've got a little bit of it here a little bit of that will give us the color of green on his lips that we're looking for um, so this is this this is kind of this some little fleckies here of this blue color gonna go a little heavier in this area lighter here because we're gonna come back in with some yellowy orangey colors there so back up to this area here to see all those stripes are starting to come forward it's starting to look you know planned mm. I want these to be darker so of course this purple gray
let's get in here to this gill plate, uh, this, this this jaw area, and start adding some brighter color. This is where it starts to become a lot more fun. Look at that. And get in there with that neon orange and really push down on it. Ooh, look at that. Would you look at that? Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, this is so much fun. Okay, then we're gonna come in here and go over this fin here a little bit. I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna add some of this to his eyeball area, the iris part. Not all of it, there's still some white showing there. Look at that. Um, I'm gonna come back and go over some of these areas just a little bit. Not a ton, but a little bit. I'm gonna give him a little highlight back here. I'm also going to come in with a little bit of color here on his face. I'm going to give him a little bit of this orange here. Just going over the areas, just a touch. A little bit of the orange here, because I've seen them like this. Ooh. Might have been a little much so we're just gonna blend that out just a touch no problem I'm gonna grab spring green that's not the color that I want I want more chartreuse colors let's grab yellow green and the hoo hoo hero yep that's better okay And we're going to add some darker colors up in this area here in just a minute, but I want to kind of come in and settle this down just a skosh. I also want to go ahead, I'm going to add the chartreuse right here because I like the undertone of that color, but his pectoral fin's a lot darker, so I'm going to gradually, so we're going to go with the olive green, Purple gray.
gonna grab this um, camel color. Color the under the back fin. So we want this one to come forward, this one to set down. I'm also gonna take some of this color and just add some of it randomly. Cause look how beautiful that is. Bring it back here just a touch. We've got a lot of work left to do on this tail area. There's still a lot of white showing on this. But we also are going to pick up the, the watercolor here shortly and start adding some watercolor to it. And use that color up here on his eye. Makes everything a little more cohesive this way. Add some of it right in here. All right, so I'm liking the way this is looking. Now I'm wondering if we should do a little stuff in the background. And then I'm like, which, what should we do in the background? Should we do some, just like a, an outline there? Maybe a little drippy of color. The pressure, the pressure to have all that figured out. The pressure is real. Okay, I'm gonna move my phone out of the way here. I feel like, You know, I never use black. There's the warm gray. We're gonna put the black back over here. I'm gonna come in here and darken up some of these areas with this warm gray. This is the 90% warm gray from the Prismacolor line. We're just gonna come in here and darken this up just a skosh. We come in here and add a few little polka dotty areas to the fin. This is where we just start to add in those details that really make everything just pop. We go around the iris part of the eye, do a little love here, just a touch underneath here, just barely. I don't want to really change the color that much. I just want to start to make it feel like there's a little bit more going on than what meets the eye. I'm going to barely Add a little bit of it in here. I'm gonna add some more behind the bump. Got this big old humpty hump. Add a little bit more of it here. I'm gonna add a little bit of it here. I'm gonna definitely add some more in the spot of the tail. I'm gonna add a little more here. I have had the door open all day for the cats and I have let a fly into my office. So I'm sorry if you can hear that on the camera. There's, I just, uh, I just realized he was in here. Oh, it's so annoying. Okay. A little bit of it up here. I'm thinking I want to enhance his eye a little bit. We're going to grab some of this carmine. And you know, I gotta just kind of spread that carmine love throughout the whole thing here so it's a little more cohesive.
Now, when you add the red over the green, red and green are complementary colors. So it adds a very, very nice shadowy color. Kind of a, and it's gonna make a brown, but it's gonna make a nice reddish brown. So I like it. And I'm not pushing real hard, very, very softly. There's a lot going on in this picture. There's a lot going on in this picture. <laughs> a lot. But just adding all the layers and all the layers and all the layers, that's kind of how you get it to look. That's how you get it to look the like it's more realistic. Okay, back to this 90% gray here. Gonna add a few more little scales to this. Gonna come in and add some darker color to the belly part here. It's a really, really, really dark color. I'm gonna go ahead and outline this part of the tail just a touch. Okay. All right, I'm gonna grab this kelp green and I'm gonna come here to the tail. And I'm just gonna start adding some more color back here to the tail. There's gonna be a little bit of this green coming off of this tail here. You're gonna have kind of a, you're gonna have a little bit of, of, of a scale trail here, right through the middle part of this tail. Well, his back, I guess you would say.
I'm gonna bring this green over that gray, kind of blend this in a little bit more so it's not so harsh. I'm gonna bring some of that green down into the tail fin. Here we go, I'm gonna come up this way. Oh yeah, that's lovely. There we go, now it's starting to, that's starting to look really good. little bit of that green up in here. Lots of little, just little dotties everywhere. Little dotties everywhere. I'm gonna randomly add some up here or down here. gonna pick up this lime use the side of it to fill in that color and we'll use the paint pen and the gel roll to come in and add some whiter areas I'm just happy that it's all just blending out pretty nicely here. We're going to add some darker red colors. Okay, so I'm going to put that one down. I'm going to pick up the scarlet red. Actually, I'm going to go for... That's magenta. We don't want magenta. I want a dark red color. Crimson red. Let's try the crimson red down here. Oh, yeah, that's the color we wanted. There it is. Oh, yes. There we go. Okay, I'm digging that. I'm gonna add a little bit of crimson back here. I hope you're starting to see that it's really just tiny little layers of color on top of layers of color. We're about to break out the watercolors with this. I'm gonna have to figure out what I wanna do for, I want a little bit of orange up in here. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's working. I want a little bit of orange up in here. Yep, that's working. Kind of accentuating all of the uh, colors that are already in play. Got that. 
want the coral back. want the dark brown back. I really have got to get this darker. This, these, this fin right here is not quite where it needs to be. So we're going to go over the a large portion of it with that. And then we're going to come over here and grab some of this dark green. We're going to add some of the dark green to the fin on the opposite sides. Now this dark green's got a dark green has got a lot of blue in it. So it's pretty in your face colored. Add a little bit of it to the tail of here. We're gonna add a little bit of it right here. Gonna get rid of that. I can pick up the oop, that one hit the floor. Okay, there's that. I'll grab some of this peach, pinky peach color. Here's the fluorescent orange. Gotta get me some more of that fluorescent orange in there. Woo! I'm gonna go right over the top of that. A couple of those areas with the fluorescent orange. Gonna go over the top of some of this area with the fluorescent orange. Gonna put that down. Gonna grab a darker green. This is olive green. So we're gonna come in here and we're gonna just start adding some little squiggles of scale pattern. With this olive green. Just kind of let that Start to really accentuate there. Now up here, the scales are teeny tiny, so we're just gonna. Make tiny little marks. We've got to darken all of this up. You see how it's all just kind of starting to come together now, finally? all giving off scale vibes. That's what we're trying to do. Give off some scale vibes.
So then we're gonna come back in here and just on the very top, really kind of drive home the idea that this is much darker up here. in here and right where that pectoral fin meets the back we're gonna just on this top part we're gonna come across here and really darken that up a little bit as well Woo! look at that it's starting to come together I'm so excited And we're gonna grab, this is the golden yellow. The other thing I do wanna do is take this kelp green and kinda go around the outline of all of these scales here and it doesn't have to be perfect, but you want some of those lines to be a little bit darker, some of them to be a little bit lighter. So I'm gonna sharpen, again, general sharpener. I'm gonna sharpen this to a point. Ooh, already breaking it. Yep, already breaking it. I'm pushing too hard, and I don't need to push that hard. I just want to get rid of the illustration line and add in a green line because it does have a green line. And then I'm just going to continue making those little half circles as I go back on this fish. Half circles, just little half circles. Just the idea of there being scales. That's all. If we were painting this, we'd be a lot more we'd be a lot more cautious with how we were doing it. But this is like field sketch. So we just wanna remind ourselves that this fish has a pretty intense pattern of scales.
Okay, now we gotta cipher this background here, but first I'm gonna add a little bit of, of highlighties with the jelly pen here, just to kind of see where we're at. I also like it because it sort of gives the illusion that the fish is wet. And just like in the prior videos, kind of lay it down, touch it with your finger, pull some of that color off because you don't want it to be so saturated. That it looks too much like a graphic illustration. I mean, we're, we are doing graphic illustration here, but I like it to be a little more realistic. Me personally, that's just me personally. You do you. I like knowing I can come back in after the fact and put some white over some of these areas and get them back the way I had them prior to getting crazy with the colors. Because sometimes I get carried away with all this color. come back in here and figure out what in the world we're doing with this background because I want the background to be fun on this one. think that after a while, after you've done so many of these, you would just remember where all the things go on the fish. And this fish has not been terribly challenging, even though green is not my favorite color. It has been fun to play in all this color. But, you know, this fish is also every color of the rainbow, so that always makes me happy. Set it down and pick it up with your finger. So, you know, by the time this is finished, I'm gonna have white all over my fingers, but I don't I don't care. I I like just that amount of control. You can't let it dry too long or you won't be able to pick it up. Like this right here. Now one thing you can do is come over and just smear a little bit of that top color over the top and kind of set that all that highlighty color down again that way as well so and if we get too much on there we can also come back in and
Not too shabby. Not too shabby. I'm gonna add a little bit of a, some more of an advanced highlight here. Gonna kinda use the pen to get rid of some of that original drawn line. And do the same thing back here because those colors are pretty transparent and so that line sticks out more than what I want it to same thing up here I'm going to color over this line and then I'm going to let it dry completely and then I'm going to smudge the color over the top of it so that that white line isn't necessarily there But that way we also don't have these, you know, distinct graphic illustration styled lines on the fence either. I think that's better. Oh yeah, that's way better. still see them they're just not as prominent that's what we were looking for Okay, so there's that. Let's figure out, let's just jump. Let's just jump into a background color. So what if I outline it in my favorite aqua color and we just kind of see what that looks like? What would that look like? What if we just kind of had a line going all the way around it? And I have to put down the uh, color pencil first so we create a barrier between this and the um, watercolor paper, watercolor that's going to go down on top of this. How's that going to look? How is that? Is that good? I think it's okay. I think it's okay. And then I'm wondering, can we get away with having like a yellow into the green? Ooh, no, not that color of yellow. Wow, no. Let's um, immediately no. Immediately no. Ugh, no, not that color. See, I've been doing this for a very long time and even I still have issues with figuring out exactly what color am I going to use here, there, and yonder on a page. Still have issues figuring that out. Oh, I'm liking the darker aqua though. Okay, that's not terrible. That is like my favorite color, so. But this aqua works with this fish.
That's kind of nice. I don't like this, but I'm kind of stuck with that. Mm, it's okay. So let's go around it this way. That's kind of cool. I'm glad that I got rid of the harsh lines. Oh, this is fun. Okay. Oh, that's fun. I like it. Okay, so but I think some of these areas should be a little thicker. There's that. So then I'm wondering, should we grab a paint pen? I don't know what color this is gonna look like. It's just gonna be darker. Mm-hmm. Maybe instead of this, we use this one. Wow, y'all, that's just smearing. Okay, so maybe we use the, maybe we use the paint pen, the stinky one.
Okay, well, I don't hate it. That's always a good thing. I'm gonna... Ugh. See, that's not... <laughs> mm, just keep reminding yourself, practice. It's just practice. It's just for practice. Hmm. Okay, I'm kind of digging that. I'm not going to lie. I'm kind of liking it. That's kind of fun. Okay, time to break out the watercolor brush. I'm gonna clean it off here a little bit on the paper towel. Just squeeze that barrel. It's got the water still in it. I am interested to see how this fluorescent pink and this fluorescent orange are gonna look on here. Let's just see what we got. Oh yeah. I'm just gonna come in, bounce a little tiny bit of this color in there, just for good measure, just for a little extra boom. Now I'm just kind of blending out the colors with my brush. Um, I'm gonna grab some of the blue. This is oh, the electric blue come in here and just lay some of that in there and I can go back in over the top with um, some more of the paint some more of the pen that's not a problem I'm just gonna kind of smooth some of this out I want some of this interference green these fish are spectacularly colored I mean, they're just, they're pretty mind blowing really as to what they really look like. So I'm just gonna bounce some of this interference in there. I'm gonna grab some of the interference blue. I'm gonna put that, I always like to put the interference blue in the darkest areas. Don't like to cover the entirety of it, 
just and just enough so that you can see that it's there also like to put the interference blue over the orange it's really nice color there's some interference blue in this palette here I'm gonna try it out because I haven't tried it yet but I can see that it's interference blue I'm gonna add some of this blue to the fins then we're gonna grab some interference orange Grab some of the interference orange, gonna pull some of that just, just in a few little areas. We don't want to get too crazy with it. I mean I I love it, but I don't want to get too crazy with it because it will it will kind of hinder what we've already done with the fish. I'm gonna grab some of that interference gold. Just put it in here and there. It'll just give the illusion of the sparkles. I'm gonna grab a little bit of that fluorescent green. I'm gonna add some of that to the dorsal fin there. I'm gonna grab some of the metallic greens here. Grab some of that fluorescent yellow with a dirty brush, so it's not going to be so in your face, but it is going to be pretty bright. Woo! Look at that! I hope you can see that. On it, it is pretty intense here. Oh my goodness, that is. Whew. You know when I paint the fish, it makes me want to take up painting lures. I think a book on lures would be really cool. Because I think lures are beautiful too. The fish are gorgeous. The lures are gorgeous. It's just all so spectacular. This appears to be a gold. So I'm going to grab some of it. It's got metallic in it. It's a little more yellow. Oh wow, yeah, that's really working. Okay, now I have some of my fine tack colors here and these are really pretty wild. We're just gonna come in and just add some little, just some little dotties of some of that gold because we don't want to take away from all the work we've done on the fish already. So we're just gonna add a few little gold scales, that's all. got a really nice green here. And then the other thing is, is that I know that this blue, it's like a powder blue, but it's a metallic. So it's gonna give the illusion of light hitting this fish, which is kind of what we're going for. And then I'm gonna come over here and grab a little bit of one of these colors so that it's gonna sit on top. Oh, there we go, that's what I want. I'm gonna grab just a touch of the purple with some of this blue. Oh, this is it right here. Just darken some of this up. See how that just sets it back just a little bit more. We're gonna add a little bit of it to the end of the tail here, just in a few areas. Not the whole thing, just a tiny bit of different color. Just some of these finishing touches will make all the difference in the world when we call it good. We're about to call it good. Look at 
those. Bottom line is, I could tell you that this, this fish is done, or I could tell you that we've reached the halfway point. But I think for what we're trying to achieve here, so I'm gonna clean this off. I'm gonna grab some of this aqua. And just go around. I like the fine tech colors, but I don't like the fact that they're hollow. I think that's not cool. I think that's not okay at all. They cost a lot of money and they're not filled all the way. They're totally hollow. I want to add green to this. I don't know if it's a good idea or not. I always get hung up here. This is, <laughs> this is the part of the show that I'm like, mm, I don't know if I'm doing the right thing or not. This is fun. This is not something I ever get to do with my other painting style. So I'm just gonna go with it. If it looks terrible, who cares? Oh, that's fun. That's... Okay. Well, I think I win because I don't hate it. Add some more orange interference to it. Some more green interference to it. A little more orange. 
and I think we call it. Let's sign this thing and get on down the road. Oh, look at that. Oh my goodness. Look at th that is so much fun. All right, there you have it. Peacock bass in the books. Let me see if I can get it to shine for you. Ooh, look at that shimmer. Thanks for joining me in the studio. I'm Rio, this has been Coloring Passports, and I'll catch you on the next page.